Hey folks, Quilly Teen here, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play for Factorio! It's been a while since we've done one of these, and people have been uh, asking me to do one for the new uh, version 0.17 over here, which is still currently in a preview build. Technically, we're not a release version of version 0.17 yet, but uh, we are, uh, we're getting very close to the release version, so I thought maybe it's time to go ahead and get that started. And I thought what I would do is I would do a run on sort of purely vanilla settings, no mods, uh, as well as I guess more or less the uh, the basic sort of sandbox setting. Yeah, we're just on, on default over here. And that might make it uh, pretty good for maybe more tutorially kind of content for the people who have not really played Factorio before. I mean, we're still gonna, you know, try to push forward and do this. It's not gonna be, it's not gonna be just like a beginner's guide to Factorio, but um, I think it's gonna be pretty good if you are new to Factorio and you wanna learn how to play the game. I think we're gonna be having a pretty good baseline experience there. One of the things to note is I'm not gonna be playing on peaceful mode, which actually I also often prefer, I quite like not having to worry about the aliens, but let's put it on there. It does lead to some fun chaos and we'll see how it goes. So point 0.117 of Factorio which uh, is very close to release. They're feeling very confident about releasing the version 1.0 here. Uh, this is basically very close to the, what the final version out of Early Access will be for Factorio. Factorio has been in Early Access for a long time, but it's one of the game examples I always give for a game that does Early Access right, uh, because it is... Uh, it has been really fun and really good quality game for a very long time. Point one seven does revamp the UI considerably, a few quality of life improvements and a variety of things that are gonna be very exciting. So as Factorio free play, this is us over here. Hello, we, uh, we have been stranded on an alien planet all alone and our job, our main priority is to launch a rocket to space with a satellite. That is, that is sort of winning Factorio in the sandbox play over here. Um, and yet, even after you do that, there's tons more that you can do with the game. Mostly your goal is to make a giant ass factory that does awesome stuff. We take a look at the, our current known map over here. Uh, the world, is Factorious World infinite? I think it is, because I think it procedurally generates everything based on seeds and things like that. So I think it is an infinite world. Um, but this is the known world right now. Uh, we've got the area we can see currently. This is the area we know about over here, and we don't know anything outside these bounds. But I'm pretty sure, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's an infinite world. Anyway, uh, and we will be having to explore it later on. We've got your starting area will always have three basic resources. You will have iron, coal, copper, and stone. This is everything you need to get started. And over here, we do have some alien nests over here. So this is so vision range over here. We can't quite see what's going on, but these red blips are aliens. They will attack you if you get close. They'll also attack your buildings if they're too close. In addition to that, um, they will be aggro, they'll be angered by pollution uh, and, and attack the source of pollution. The pollution can drift quite far away um, with the, on the wind and everything like that. So at some point we'll have to deal with these guys. But for now, we just have to get our bases going. So this is us. We've got a little bit of inventory. So if you hit E, that opens up your sort of character um, info here. So this is our character's current inventory. This is what's in our pocket. And then here's what we can craft by hand currently. We've got some different categories of stuff that we can craft. Now there might be a few things that I, I will be slightly confused about. Uh, because I haven't played very much of 0.17, for example. The first thing you would normally do is build yourself a, uh, a pickaxe, but uh, that is no longer a thing in the game. You don't have to construct a pickaxe. You've got that, uh, I guess, built in. So what we can do is we can go and chop trees. So depending on where you start, you might have this. So I started kind of in a desert, so I've got these kind of dry trees over here, as well as some trees that are chopped down. So that'll give us a little bit of wood, which we'll do something with in a little bit. Um, we can also whack some rocks and get some stone. So. Uh, I just realized, is the volume off? I think the volume was off. I'm like, oh, it's really quiet. No, I think it's, in fact, muted. Now it'll probably be too loud. Oh, that's not bad, okay. So you can whack at the iron ore in the ground, but it's really slow. No one really wants to do that. We can certainly speed this up quite a bit. So mining iron, this is gonna be the, one of the primary sources of stuff. So in your inventory, you do start off with one burner drill. We'll put that on our inventory bar over here. We also start with a, um, a furnace over here. Um, so a stone furnace and a burner drill, as well as a few different resources. Now that it's on our bar, what we can do is we can click it and place it in the world. Notice it's got a little arrow. Um, this is what direction the output of this. this is where it's gonna drop metal. You can hit R to rotate, Shift R to counter rotate, and you can also hold Shift to go into ghost mode where you just place down 
Um, actually, oh, yeah, because those are not valid things. You can place down these sort of temporary blueprints as a placeholder, and later on, if you get bots, you can uh, place them down. But we're just going to go and put the burner drill right here. It's going to complain that it doesn't have fuel. We can load a variety of things can be used as fuel. This tooltip gives you a hint. So we can use wood. I'm going to right click on this uh, stack to grab half of it, put it in there as fuel. So now it's going to create iron ore. Now the iron ore is just going to get plopped on the ground right over here. You can hit F to pick up things on the ground. So we've just picked up the iron ore. We'd want to go into something. And what we're going to do is we're going to have to go into a stone furnace over here. So it's going to drop iron ore into here. The stone furnace needs fuel. We're going to put some wood in there. The stone furnace doesn't have an arrow. It doesn't drop anything anywhere. But what it's going to do, it's going to create iron plates out of the iron that is getting mined over here. And I can always pick this up this way. As a shortcut, uh, first of all, if you tap Alt, it'll show you these extra icons on buildings. And if you control click on the building, you will pick up anything that's stored up over there. So we can collect iron plates now over here. Now this is gonna need more fuel and chopping down trees for wood and things like that is not a really viable solution for that long term. First of all, wood doesn't have that much energy. We're gonna to wanna to use the wood for other things like chests. But here we've got coal. So we can also mine coal over here and that's gonna be a better source of fuel. So we can whack on this for a little bit. But again, we don't really wanna do this by hand. And the real point of Factorio here is you wanna avoid doing anything by hand whenever possible. I actually feel like we can probably bring up the volumes just a scooch here. Just a little bit. There we go, that's not too bad. Okay, so I mean, that's okay. But what we wanna do, see this is already out of fuel. What I'm gonna do is control click on the coal here. It'll smartly input it in the place. Um, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna make more of these miners. In particular, we're gonna want some of that going on for the coal. Now we can craft these miners by hand. Burner miner drills over here. Uh, these are the ingredients. They need some iron plates, some iron gear wheels, which are also made from iron plates, as well as a stone furnace. A stone furnace requires stone. So in the end, you can see the raw material down at the bottom. We need five stone and nine iron plates to be able to make burner drills, and we can make two, which is great. So I'm gonna go ahead and make two, and you can see at the bottom what it does is it queues up all the individual parts. So you don't have to like pre-make the stone furnace or the gears or anything like that when you're making it by hand. It's pretty intelligent. And here's one of my favorite tricks to set up on the coal mine here. We're gonna have one burner drill over here. We're gonna have another one pointing into there. So what we're gonna do, as soon as we get, as long as we get one started, so this burner drill here, I'll take the wood back actually, is making coal and is then dumping the coal into this one, which is gonna dump coal into here. So they're gonna keep each other fueled up. And what's gonna happen, the amount of coal sitting in each one of these will keep going up. So you just burned one, but they're gonna keep piling coal into each other like this. And then what I can do when I come by, I can just go and control click on these guys to pick up any coal that they've got stored up. So now we've got a nice way to continue to make fuel. We can go and refuel this over here and keep the stone furnace going with some more plates. Lovely. So we're gonna wanna scale up the um, our mining operations over here. So let's go and get some stone. We'll have to get some stone manually here. We need at least five to make another. Oh, we've got some in our hand actually. So that means I can, yeah, I can make uh, more burner drills. I'm gonna make two more, that's gonna be fine. I'm also gonna make a wooden chest over here out of some of our wood. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a burner drill over here and I'm gonna put a chest here. Now, once you've, um, oh, and by the way, if you've got something attached to your, your mouse cursor, you can hit Q to drop it. Um, once you put something down here, like I don't actually have a stone furnace in my inventory, so I can't place it anymore, but it's still there. It remembers that that's the spot for it. So I'm gonna put a wooden chest, and by the way, you can use the hotkeys one through zero, I guess, to access these. I'll put a chest over there. I'll put a little bit of fuel. I guess I'm gonna, well, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run down here, grab some coal, and one of the nice things in 0.17, they increase the reach that you can grab things. Drop a bunch of coal in there. So what's gonna happen is this drill is going to make stone over time for us and save us from having to manually mine some. I will grab a little bit while I'm here, there you go. Grab a little bit over there. Great. Um, boom, boom. So what I need to do is we're going to need, see that was out of fuel for a sec, but the other one fell it into it. What we're going to do is we're going to need a lot more iron. So what I want to do is I want to scale up our iron mining considerably. So I want, um, I want more of these drills and burners over here. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna grab the coal and I'm going to control right click 
and then control left click. So I put half a stack in there by control right clicking, half the stack on my hand goes in there, and by control left clicking, the rest of the stack goes in here. So now we're getting more iron plates a little faster, and we're just gonna try to scale up this mining relatively quick. Um, the other thing you can do is when you open up something that needs something, if you just control click anywhere in your inventory, it'll smartly put uh, the appropriate thing. It put the wood in there first, um, which I may have preferred the coal, but it's fine, it doesn't matter. Uh, I probably will want to get some more wood here because we're going to need it for a couple of different things. Um, I'm going to definitely need to get more iron mining. You're going to want to get, I mean, to start off with this little bootstrap, which is still fairly manual. We're going to be automating things like crazy later with belts and automatic little robotic insert arms and all kinds of things like that. To start off with, you're going to want at least three of these little iron mines possibly five like before you get to the automated stage so we've got a fair amount of iron plates which is great uh we're gonna keep picking up the coal as we go by here we're gonna pick up a stack of stone and then what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna set up one two of these burners and a couple more stone furnaces and we're gonna get set up over here on the copper you don't need a ton of copper mines early on um i'll set up a, i guess i'll set up a trio uh which i just realized needs uh another Oop. Oh, can't reach a little too close. There we go. There's a very popular mod called Long Reach that allows you to take things from like basically as far as you can see, or even from like the map mode, which is kind of nuts. Uh, one of the things you can do instead of like finding the thing on your toolbar, you can hit Q, which is sort of an eyedropper tool. If I hit Q on this, it'll grab an, a, a copy of that from my inventory and place it there. So Q is really nice for copying stuff like that. And then I don't have a ton of coal. Let me drop some half stacks in these just to get this started. We're clearly gonna need more, but now we are gonna get the uh, copper plates being made. Three is like way more than we're gonna need um, at this early stage of the game. In fact, the fact that we did that before more iron is kind of derp-tastic. But we're going to do that anyway. I'm going to grab this coal, make sure this thing is fully powered on coal, grab more stone, and then, yeah, basically just be ready to do a bunch more of the um, the iron mines set up. And then we'll go into the next stage. Next stage is going to be power because we need power to run research. So one of the big things in the game, oh, I hit T, but you can see here, press T to start new research in the top right. You can click on that or just hit T. You get the research screen. There is a ton of different technologies that you can research over here. The ones in yellow are the ones we can currently research. <coughs> uh, everything else is a prerequisite. So for example, if we want to research electronics, we will first need to do automation. And here you can see automate electronics leads to all these things down here. Some of the texts are repeatable as well. You'll see little numbers here. So this is weapon shooting speed level one. After that, you research level two and so on and so forth. Some are infinitely repeatable as well. Um, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to get is automation here. Automation unlocks the ability to build a, um, an, a, an automatic, I think, what do I call it? Assembler? Assembling machine one. So rather than craft things by hand, you'll be able to craft things in the assembly machine. Uh, so we're gonna to wanna to grab that first. To research this, we're gonna need a research lab and it's gonna cost us 10 red science packs. A research lab does actually need power to run. So in practice, what we need to do first is get some power generation going on. You know, I'm actually gonna trim this back over here um, and um, I'm gonna get that going on because I don't need that much copper and I certainly want some more iron production over here. The other thing we're gonna need is, let me actually move these. because I want to have everything in line a little bit better. Five is going to be pretty good for us right now. We'll do this. Um, get a little bit of that going on. We clearly need a lot more coal. We also need more coal mining. What I'm going to want is a little bit more burners. I like to set up a, a ring of four of those burners in a circle. Uh, so let's do that. Let's do this. Like that, what I'm gonna do is rotate this one to go up. So now these four feed into each other. And that way we're gonna be mining coal four times as quickly, which is kind of nice. We'll get you down over here and what coal we do have. Again, I'm just gonna do some um, control right clicks here to split these stacks in half. It doesn't leave a lot at the bottom, but it's gonna be okay. Let's get a little bit more coal going on in there. Excellent, again, we're gonna be automating a lot of this Oh, did I just flag you for like deconstruction? Is that what happened there? I bet you it is. Interesting. I actually don't know what hotkey I did that. All right, anyway, we'll, we can talk about that later on. We have a little bit of copper, not much, but we don't need a lot. Okay, 
let's talk about power. So the start of the game, the power you're gonna be using is gonna be steam power. Later on, you are gonna be able to do solar power and in fact, nuclear power. But for a large part of the game, you're gonna be reliant on steam, which is very easy to set up. What you need for steam is you need some sort of body of water and uh, this spacing is kind of tight, but I guess I'll set it up here for now. It's not gonna be um, our, our giant late game or even honestly, relatively early game power production, but we'll have a little bit of room for it. What we need first is you need an offshore pump. An offshore pump will pump water. It doesn't even need power. I don't know why. It doesn't need power. It will just pump water into pipes or other devices. We then need a boiler. A boiler will heat the water to boiling temperature, which can then be fed into a steam engine to make power. So with three of these, we can get started. One boiler can feed two steam engines, but I don't quite have enough material to complete all that currently. So I'm gonna take this offshore pump and I'm just gonna stick it offshore like that. There we go, it pumps water. I'm gonna have it feed into a boiler. Now the boiler has got a bunch of arrows. The long arrows, the one at like, facing here on the left and right side. This is where the water flows. So we wanna hook that up water to water over here. And then out of this other side here is where steam is gonna flow out of. And I mean, these can go into pipes and things, but we can also feed that directly into a steam engine. You can see the steam engine uh, has double pointed arrows on both ends. It just allows steam to pass through from either end. So, I mean, we can rotate this, I was gonna say either way, but I guess the graphics are just repeated because it's like literally makes no difference. So with this setup here, water will go into the boiler, the boiler will boil the water into the steam engine, the steam engine will create power. The boiler's complaining that it doesn't have any fuel. I'm gonna grab coal for that because I don't wanna use my, my wood for, for, um, for fuel anymore. So let me get over here, we'll grab some copper. I think I accidentally grabbed some coal here too. We'll do this, we'll grab that. Yeah, let me go and click, 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 put in some half uh, doses in there. I'll also go and probably refill, yeah, some of these. So anything that's blinking, we'll go ahead and drop some coal into there. And we'll have a long-term solution to that. Now we have like quite a bit of material in here, which is nice. So um, if I grab more coal, we can power the boiler. Uh, I can do this too, but let me, let me get back to that. We're gonna get the electricity flowing. And I mean, there's a slightly more optimal order to do this and do some of the construction, but this way I can sort of talk about the bits piece by piece. So if I grab some coal and drop it in the boiler, so the boiler is gonna consume some coal and generate some hot water. Um, it'll it'll stop, it'll slow down with its boiling here once the water, oh, there you go. You can see it's no longer consuming it very quickly. So the water, if I mouse over here, we can see on the panel on the right, it's got some steam in there, temperature of 165 degrees, which is pretty much as hot as the steam is gonna get. Um, in here, so it's done. And uh, it'll consume a little bit of fuel to maintain it there, but it's, if we're not using the steam, it's gonna stay relatively uh, static. So you'll mostly only use the, the fuel when you use it. Um, and we need some power. So this is complaining right now. It's not hooked up to any sort of electrical grid. So to hook it up to an electrical grid, we need a couple of things. We need some electric poles. So we need wood and copper cables for this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shift click on this to do all 18 stacks. And we actually get two poles per stat, per like, use of this, so it's gonna make us 36 poles. When I use all that, it's gonna be great. And the thing we're gonna power with it is we're gonna power a research lab over here. So a research lab is where you make science, we're gonna do that. And you may remember for automation, we needed 10 red science beakers for it. Here's our automation science pack, these red beakers, or flasks, I suppose I should say. So what I'm gonna do here is if I right click, it queues up five. So if I right click twice, it'll queue up a five and another five over here. So we'll make the 10, which is what we need to get started. Making this all by hand, making these science pla um, flasks by hand is kind of slow. You can see this here, it says it takes five seconds seconds for each one. So it's gonna take us nearly a minute, plus a little bit more to make the gears do all these flasks. So automating this is gonna be very, very, very important early on. But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna set up a power pole. And for reasons that will become obvious later on, I'm gonna set one up over here and then over here. And you can see there's a little cable that connects them. There's a maximum range. So right here is sort of the limit of how far you can build it, so I'll put it there. The blue area around the power cable is the area that will receive power. So if I were to go and take a lab and put it over here, it wouldn't be connect plugged into anything. Uh, by the way, right clicking lets you dismantle something. If I go and put the lab here instead, it is powered up. And then if I take and put these uh, science packs in there, and again, you can control click anywhere in this window to dump the ones you've got, it is now starting to produce science. Ha ha, science. 
and it is doing that for us. So once we get all 10 packs, so it's gonna slowly do this. If we hit T for the research, it takes one science pack and 10 seconds times 10. So it'll take 100 seconds to finish researching the automation technology. In the meantime, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go, just for now, I'm gonna queue up a bunch more of these automation packs just to have them be ready. And I'm just gonna tend to our little production center over here to make sure that everything is still being fueled up and worked. Mostly what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a bunch of coal, get a little closer, there we go, a bunch of coal, and just making sure that these things have enough juice going on. We'll grab those copper plates, and in particular, again, the iron, because we're gonna need a lot of iron early on. Do, 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 yeah, these are still Still need a lot more stuff going on in there, but that's okay. So I'll do another dose of this. Drop you in there and there. Pick those up. Awesome. Pick up maybe some stone over here too. Lovely. And so automation is getting there. Science Lab hasn't quite finished processing all the uh, the red science that we've got. That's good. We'll get there before it runs out and we'll be stuffing some more in there as well. Again, we only need the 10 for the first science, but we're going to want to do something else after that. So yeah, it's got 11 packs in there. It's working on this. We're nearly done. Got a little bit more science coming in. Great. We are going to need more power. So since I'm just sitting around here, I'm going to make another one, two, three steam engines and one more boiler here. I'm also going to make one pipe so that we can organize some things here. I think I'll have to move the science lab out of the way just ever so slightly, which is fine. We can we can do that and take care of it in a second. Um, I'll also, we'll probably start running some power lines here soon. Science is done, so it's blinking over here to let us know. Automation is finished, so what are we gonna get next? Um, personally, I'm gonna go and grab um, logistics next. Logistics opens up some different types of belts over here. I think people may research things slightly different order, but it doesn't matter. We're gonna, we're gonna wanna get some of these. So logistics uh, requires 15 science packs. No, sorry, 20 science packs and 15 seconds per research cycle, but gives us the ability to build some underground stuff and whatever, so that's okay. We've got this queued up, which is great. Um, so yeah, now I, I wanna stop building things by hand. Let me actually stop building these science packs. There we go. I don't want to build those by hand anymore because what we can now do is we can build assembling machines which will automatically build certain things for us. So I'm going to build one, two, about three of these to get started, I think. And we're also going to get ready for some of our automation stuff. So we're going to go and get some transport belts. So I've right clicked a couple of times to make five stacks of each, but you do get two belts per stack. So it's going to be 20 belts. Um, and I think I'll just shift click all these eight inserters because we'll put them to fairly good use over here. Uh, hopefully you still have power for now. Yeah, 14, you're good. The only thing you're powering the science lab, so you're going to be good for a good long time. But yeah, we're about ready to start a wee bit of automation, which is going to be swell. The other thing we can start doing is some electric mining drills. So we will no longer have to fuel these miners with coal anymore, which is a big, huge step forward. Pick up a little bit more stone, get some stone furnaces going on because we're going to need a bunch of those. Um, and we're going to make sure you and you have plenty of fuel. Keep that going over there. Awesome. Okay, so a lot of our work is ready to move on here. So what we're going to do is we're going to sort of move things where this power is currently being generated. Well, we'll leave the generation here, but we're going to move some other things out of the way. I'm going to pick up the lab. It also picks up the science packs. I'm going to hit Q just to like eyedropper the power cable here. And here's the thing you can do to like place these power cables at proper distance. If you just click here and then move, it'll automatically put whoops, I accidentally hit a hotkey, so I messed up things. It'll automatically drop the cables, just as long as you hold your mouse button, at the proper distance to get things going. So we're just gonna run a bunch of power over here, so that the area where all our resources are, this is where our power is going to be. Excellent. Uh, what I'll do is I'll put down my lab again, uh, we'll put some science back in here, and then we're going to automate the production of the red science over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our assembling machine, we'll put it down on our barge so it's easy to do. So we'll put an assembling machine, say, right here. And what we're going to do is this assembling machine would like to produce, so we get to choose. By clicking on it, we get to choose what it should produce. We want it to produce red science packs. So to produce red science packs, it needs both copper plates. Well, that's fine. It can drop copper plates in here directly. It also needs iron gear wheels. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, copy this with the Q, tell this to produce iron gear wheels. We'll load it up with iron. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our inserters over here and boom, boom, like this. So now 
They are automatically producing gears for us, which actually work very quickly, much quicker than we use them, and then dumping it in here. Because you actually get one gear um, every quarter second, actually, because this takes a half second to produce a job, and um, oh no, sorry, I'm, I'm reading this wrong. It takes a half a second to, pr to finish a job, and that gives us one gear. It consumes two iron plates. So we get two gears per second. This only needs one gear every five seconds. So to produce a flask, you need one gear, and it takes five seconds to do a science pack. So it's quite slow, and you'll notice the science packs are accumulating over here. The reason for it is the inserters will only move something if it there's, there's extra space. I think it'll wait until there's like less than two or something before it bothers to move things over. But this will keep shuffling over. Now for now, I have to keep loading this with copper plates, or more meaningfully, I have to keep loading this one with iron plates, which is kind of like, oof. That's slow. We've got a little bit of automation. Like, great, science is going to keep going as long as we feed it, but feeding all this stuff by hand sucks. So let's uh, be ready to move on to the next step. And the next step will mostly involve many transport belts. So we'll grab some of that. And many transport belts mostly needs a lot of steel plates, which is why I say you need a lot of steel. We're going to want mass steel production up and running as soon as we can. Uh, there we go. We'll just drop some more in there, as much coal as we've got. So I'm going to make a bunch more transport belts. I'm gonna take the transport belts I've got and put them on my little hot bar over here so it can refer to things. So transport belts will automatically ferry goods around. So what we could do is, just as an example, is we could have a inserter, grab the uh, iron plates out of this, put it on a little conveyor belt in some fashion, convey it all the way over here and have another inserter drop things into there, which is pretty swell. Now, if we just sort of do these things piecemeal, we'll end up with a horrible spaghetti mess of stuff. Now, don't get me wrong, at some point we'll end up with lots of spaghetti mess of stuff over here. Um, because, well, A, it's me, but also it's it's kind of just how things are going to happen in Factorio here. I'm going to just queue up some various jobs for things that I know we're going to need at some point. For example, the, um, the wire, we'll need a lot of that. And we can honestly pre-make a bunch of iron gears too, which is going to save us some things that we're going to be, because we're still going to make a few things by hand for a little bit longer. Most of the right now, we're having to wait for a lot more iron to be made. Copper, like we're, we're laughing on it. And even stone, we're actually pretty good on the stone amount right now. Um, what we could do is have the stone feed into um, an automated uh, little assembly thing and make us some stone furnaces. But this, we're, these are easy to make right now, and we're going to have tons more stone furnaces right now than we need. We don't want to make any more burner drills because we're really looking to move beyond that. Oh, are we being attacked already? Holy crap! Um, so, we might just die here. You do start off with a gun. I did not expect this. Apparently, I've gone too tutorially over here. We're about to die. If I'm not shooting... Oh, sometimes you can outrun them. Wow, uh, so we'll hit continue. We'll respawn after a bit. Well, that's pretty funny. We're gonna talk about these aliens in a second here. Uh, we do respawn with a basic gun. The rest of our inventory is on the ground somewhere. So there's biters for you. Aren't they fun? So, by the way, you shoot by just holding on the space bar and mousing on top of an enemy. Um, well, dang. Okay. Uh, my corpse is where? Because I should be able to loot it, I think. Right here. That's me? No? Maybe I do loot? No, here it is. I think we just dismantle our corpse. There you go. And we'll get our stuff back. All right, well, we're... did I just do a voiceover? So uh, maybe we'll um, maybe we'll research turrets over here, <clears throat> or better weaponry, or something. I don't know. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. This is damaged, but I'm not going to worry too much about fixing it quite yet. Do do do. So that bit getting smashed is fine. Yeah, we're gonna have to take care of this nearby nest here because that was quite unpleasant. Dun dun dun. Okay, um, we can build we can build some light armor right now. It's not very good armor, but we'll get it started. So at least we have a little bit of body armor so we don't die right away. Uh, bullets are, we have a fair amount right now, but I think I will go ahead and queue up construction of some more. It's not very fast to do. Um, 
can we clear out this? Yeah, because it's these guys. No, there's too many of them. If we look at the map, there's this uh, pollution overlay here. You see these red areas? This is how far pollution are reaching. So it's triggering this nest and making them very mad. So we're gonna have to do something about that. Okay, I was being maybe a little too slow and tutorially here. And that base was very close, certainly far too close for comfort. Um, I maybe should have just researched weapons too before the turrets here. Let me go and get those in there. They're, they're certainly gonna attack again. And I don't wanna move in there with just a pistol. Um, setting up a defensive turret or two will be a pretty good start, but yeah, we'll have to research actual weapons next. So this is what I get for mostly playing on peaceful. And yeah, I would like to repair this, but um, uh, do you start with the ability to? Yeah, we do actually. Yeah. We can build some repair packs. All right, let me build a few, throw them over here. And then yeah, as long as it's on your hand, then you just hold your mouse button on a target and you'll repair it. Turrets are finished, good. Let's get the military over here. Start researching that. Let's, uh, what do I need? I need some more iron. Uh, more iron. Yep. Boom, get this built. So turrets fat fire a little bit faster than players, which is very nice. What I'm gonna do is grab you, put you down over here. And I'm gonna use this as a bit of a defensive edge so I can retreat to the turret and just kite things over here. I'm gonna take uh, my bullets from my hand. I'm gonna put half of them in the turret over here. So as I attack these guys, I'll be able to retreat back to the turret. Now one turret definitely won't be able to just like handle this, but I'm gonna grab some more of these, just waiting for the military so we can get a small machine gun or submachine gun, I should say, to help defend this. Because I don't, the pistol is not a great weapon. I mean, maybe we can do it, but I'm betting we just lose this. But yeah, we have to kill this nest. And then no more critters will spawn over here, which is good. Because this nest is currently a little further away, but if we produce a little bit more pollution, they're gonna, these guys are gonna start getting tickled by the pollution and become generally upset. The early uh, aliens here, these biters and spitters and whatnot, are fairly squishy and easy to kill, but they will evolve over time. You can actually, um, uh, what's the key? There's a key to, to enter chat box, and I can't recall what it is um, right now. Uh, you can type slash evolve, and it'll tell you how evolved things are, but basically they'll get worse over time. Come on, military stuff. There you go, keep making those. I mean, we still were going on beakers there, or flasks. Science packs is just what I should say, because that's what the game refers to them as. A few more plates, just that we're ready to go. So close. Now, what I could do, I could actually have two science labs running here, and I should do that. Let me get you in the queue here, because this pre creates flasks faster than the science lab um, actually consumes them, so we can be feeding two at once here. But we're almost done in the military, so we'll take care of this and we'll put a cut in here. Yeep, boop, 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 boop. Come on, I think I've got everything I need on hand. There we go, so that's done. So I can go over here. I can now build a submachine gun, thank you. We'll queue up a few more um, bullets going on here, but yeah, we're gonna be switching over. Uh, now you can, uh, I don't know, we might want some walls at this point. I don't know, I'll, electronics doesn't give us anything by themselves. Still, we'll set that up. Submachine gun in the queue. And basically we'll just get rid of the pistol at that point. I have no interest in keeping it around. You just grab it, hit Z to drop it onto the ground. There we go. Submachine gun is in place over here. So now we can kill these guys a lot faster. And I'm going to drag them over to the turret, which again does pretty good damage. You don't move as fast when you're shooting. Turret nearly died, but not quite. I will repair this. There we go, and then we're gonna come over here. The way these biters work is, so while they're being affected by pollution, they do spawn. Uh, oh, you got this little spitter die down here. This is gonna hurt a lot. Focus, focus, okay, good. I'm gonna move back, you do heal over time. When you're not being attacked, you do, you do heal up. So yeah, as long as there's pollution going, this will generate critters, and once it reaches a critical mass, it will send them out to attack your base. And I've used all my bullets up. Shotguns are a little bit better, the bases have armor. So shotguns are a little bit better for tearing apart bases um, than SMGs. The SMGs are better for combat, though. 
I'm just going to grab a bunch of steel or iron over here, queue up many bullets. And then what I can also do is drop the turret right next to what's going on over here, which is what I'm going to do because it's a little bit higher base damage. So I'm just going to make sure this is in range. And then what I'm going to do is grab half my bullets, throw them in there. There we go. So I'm just going to shoot the critters that spawn. Let that finish that off. Okay. Uh, let's repair it first before I put it in my inventory. There we go. All right. So now we don't have to worry about things for a little bit. Um, although at some point we certainly will. But hopefully we'll have more defenses up by then. These things are complaining they don't have power, so we have to make sure we get more coal over. One of the first things I tend to automate is coal to our power plants. Well, let me get you in there and do this, and then make more bullets, because we're clearly gonna need more of them. All right, well, we're gonna put a cut in here. Thank you very much for watching, folks. I, and I see you next time when we continue our little episode of Factorio over here. Uh, which, um, you know, it's, everything's going to be fine. It's fine. There's not going to be any disasters. Uh, I can already tell here. Let me get another little boiler. We're going to go ahead and get a little water pipe so they connect up. And oop, I'm using shift here. Uh, we're going to some steam engines in there and then just make sure you have some coal. There you go. So we have more power generation. We didn't actually need this much, but this is going to hold us out for a long time. Mostly we just needed to get more coal in the boilers, which we now have. So this is working again. I did build a second science lab. Yes, I did. So I'm going to put you down right over there and do that. So then we'll research twice as fast, assuming we can continue to make these at an appropriate rate. Um, but that will require more automation. Folks, thanks for watching. I'm going to see you guys next time. Bye-bye.